Welcome to the viewers for the lecture in the subject RCC structures. In the last lecture, we have taken a numerical example on the design of an underground rectangular tank. That is in the lecture number 159. In 158, we have designed the we have discussed the design concepts of long wall and a short wall because um, it, when it is subjected to both soil pressure from outside and water pressure from inside and considering them individually it will be a lengthy design of course it will be a repetition of uh, uh, certain steps only for one thing you have to provide seal on the other side outer side for the other one you have to provide seal on the inner side so it will be uh, actually, it will be repeated number of times, number of times. But if we clearly distinguish the steps, the design will not be difficult. For which 158 will help. Plus, and here also in the design also, I'm not uh, concentrating much on the numerical values. I'm giving you the procedure, but I'm not concentrating on the numbers. The numbers uh, the viewers can learn from any book that you can learn the concept that is more important. So we have completed the discussion on the design of long walls and short walls. And uh, if the main steel in the vertical direction, the horizon, the distribution steel in the horizontal direction, there is no problem. Particularly in the case of shorter walls, shorter walls, above one meter from the base, the steel for the Bending moment is in the horizontal direction. The steel for pull or the steel for compression is also in the horizontal direction. So when the steel for bending moment and the tension or compression, when both are in the horizontal direction, you have to find out what is known as resultant bending moment. So that's what you have discussed. The resultant bending moment equal to m minus tx, where m is the bending moment. T is the tension or C is the compression into X. X is the distance between the center of the wall thickness and the center of gravity of the reinforcement. So there only, when both seals are in the horizontal direction, you have to find out resultant bending moment, find out the steel for bending moment, find out the steel for pull, then add them AST equal to AST1 plus AST2 that we have to provide. That's what we have discussed towards the end of the previous lecture because that I have not uh, stressed this point. Yes. All right. Now coming to the next one is that of the design of the top slab, design of the bottom slab. Design of top slab is uh, uh, usual RC design only because the capital L by small l is a 2.4. 2.4 means it is more than 2. When it is more than 2, it will be designed as a one-way slab. We know that the shorter span is 5 meters, 5 meters. Therefore, we have to design this as a one-way slab. One-way slab of span equal to 5 point, of course, up to the center of the wall thickness. Center. Sir, moment is the problem. Yes, it works. Right. Now, <coughs> center of the So, live load on the top of the slab is uh, 2 kilometer per square meter, self weight. And uh, when we add the self weight, we assume a thickness of 0.2 or 200 mm. So, 0 0.1 meter by 1 meter, if the thickness is 0.2, into 25 kilonewton per meter cube unit, unit rate of concrete. So that gives a total load of 7 kilonewton per square meter, live load plus self weight, 7 kilonewton per square meter. Right. Now the bending moment is WL square by 8. WL square by 8, uh, actually we assumed a thickness of 
point two only. So thickness for the slab. Wall thickness is point two eight. Already we have designed. We have designed the longer wall. We have designed the shorter wall. We know that the thickness of the wall is equal to two hundred eighty mm. Therefore, the centimeter to centimeter distance is five point two eight. Five point. So W into into five point two eight square by eight W square by eight is the bending moment. For which you find out the thickness. Thickness equal to bending moment by uh, say b d square. One point five three b d square. One point five three b d square equal to the bending moment, or d equal to bending moment divided by one point five three into b square root. One twenty six mm. So let us provide an overall thickness of hundred and fifty five mm. We have assumed the thickness as two hundred, but we require only overall thickness of hundred and Uh, 55 mm, uh, keeping a clear cover of 25 mm and using 16 of diameter bars. Uh, 155 minus clear cover minus half the diameter of bar 122 mm. So area of steel is equal to bending moment by sigma st into jd. But uh, here there are some uh, minor uh, changes. Actually, for the roof slab. It is not in contact with the water. Therefore, what we can do is uh, here the stress, the stress, one thirty can be used two thirty. Two thirty is the stress for the deformed bars. So, since this is not in contact with the water, instead of one thirty, we can use uh, so uh, this is from taken. The model problem is taken from some source, therefore uh, the same is followed here. But uh, anyway, the number is not a problem. But here uh, we, we can use 230. We can use 230 because this is not in contact with the water. Therefore, uh, that can be changed. So uh, otherwise, it is only a single, I mean one-way slab. That's all. One-way slab design, not in contact with the water. We can use the stresses. And the constants that are used for conventional RC design, we need not uh, use the stresses for uh, liquid storage structures. So, uh, so these things can be changed. These things can be changed. <coughs> so this is uh, uh, yes, design is yet to be done. Yes, uh, 16 of diameter bars are not an mm center to center. This is the main reinforcement. Distribution steel, uh, 0.24% of the total uh, cross-sectional area. That is 10 mm diameter bar set, 200 mm set at the center in the other direction. That is, uh, distribution uh, distribution steel is 10 mm diameter bar set, 200 mm set at the center. Main bars, 16 mm diameter at 110 mm set at the center. The main reinforcement will be provided along the shorter span direction. At the bottom, so this is what is the reinforcement detail. So the line, this is the line. This is the main reinforcement. Main reinforcement, 16 mm diameter bar set to 110 mm set at the center. Then on the top of which we have distribution steel, 10 mm diameter bars at 200 mm set at the center. So this is normal RCC design, one way slab. That's all because capital L by small l is more than two. So here. There is nothing new to learn. This is only usual design, excepting the stress. The stress here can be uh, taken as 230, and also these constants, this 0.861, uh, 1.53, these also can be worked for normal stresses because these values are meant for water tank design. Roof slab is not in touch with uh, uh, water, therefore that can be changed. Even though it is available here, it's my duty to, duty to inform the fact. Right? So, based on some source, uh, one of my student has helped in fully doing the design. But whatever is a reference given, based on that, this has been worked out. Of course, numerical problem we need not concentrate uh, that much in a design problem, but. Uh, That is also equally important. Equally important. So I will tell you.
the fat also, right? So that can be changed, that's all, right? Now coming to the design of the bottom slab. This is the most important uh, part. Now here, this is in touch with the water, and water is likely to rise up to the ground level. If there is no water rise up to the ground level, there is no problem. Because in the base slab, whatever may be the level at which the base slab, we can go for nominal thickness and nominal reinforcement. Since water is likely to rise up to the ground level, there will be uplift pressure. Particularly when the tank is empty without water. If the uplift pressure is more, then the tank will get lifted up. Therefore, the underground water tank has to be necessarily checked for flotation. flotation. That is the important uh, uh, point. So, here, if there is no source of subsoil water, only nominal reinforcement, etc., that is what we have discussed. Uh, there will be uplift pressure on the bottom of the slab. Right. The uplift pressure is given by W into H of unit rate of water 9810 into 3.85. 3.5 is the height of the side wall, assuming 300 mm thickness base slab. So, total height is 3.85. So, W into H. So, 9810 into 3.85. So, this is the uplift pressure. When the water rises up to the ground level, ground level, this will be the pressure available at the bottom of the base slab, base slab of the water. This is the uplift pressure. Now, check against flotation. The whole tank must be checked against flotation when the tank is empty. Now, total upward flotation force equal to, this is the upward pressure, 37768 into B into L, B into L, 5 meters by 12 meters, they are the inner dimensions. So, we just ignore the wall because the other parts, the wall is supporting. So, the minimum depth available is on the inner side. So, you just use the clear dimension, the clear dimension 5 meters by 12 meters into the upward pressure. So, this will uplift. So, this is the total upward force. Right. Now, what is the total downward force that is acting? So, the thickness of the bottom slab already we assumed as 350 mm. Weight of walls. Weight of walls. So, 0.28 is the thickness. Point into 5 meters, 5 meters in the breadthwise direction. 12 meters plus 12 meters in the lengthwise direction. Uh, to be little more correct, uh, actually, we have to consider the center to center thickness. Center to center is 5.28, 12.28. That can be taken. So, there are some um, corrections, corrections, uh, some corrections are need, uh, needed in the source itself. Anyway, I just tell you only the modifications, right? right. So, 0.28 into you can say 5.28 into 12.28, center to center thickness, that can be better, that will be better, into 3.5, this is the total circumference, 5 plus 5 plus 12 plus 12, into thickness, that will give the area, into height, 3.5, will give you the volume, into 25 kilo newton per meter, that is the self weight of the wall. Then weight of roof slab and finishes, weight of roof slab, initially we are assumed 0.2, uh, or we can adopt uh, 0.155 itself because finally we have adopted the thickness as 0.155 that also can be used. And here it is nothing wrong, your design will be only on the safer side. But anyway, 0.155 into 5 into 12 into uh, so this is the uh, roof slab load. Roof slab load also can take the outer dimension, outer dimension also can be taken. So, these things uh, can be adjusted, can be revised. Weight of base slab, weight of base slab, again 5 meters by 12 meters. And the reason uh, here is, since we have taken, we have taken the inner dimension is, we have taken the 
upward pressure considering only the inner dimensions considering only the inner dimension therefore all these calculations are taken based on the inner dimensions but, uh, but here you can say 5.28 into 12.28 yeah, right uh, so total uh, roof slab weight of the base slab all these things so weight of uh, walls then weight of roof slab weight of base slab and the tank is empty therefore adding all these things the weight is 1658 kilonewton so 1658 kilonewton is the total downward load what is the upward load upward load is uh, say upward load is ah, so many newtons that is the value is uh, 2266 2266 is kilo newton 2266 this is in terms of newtons so dividing by 1000 you get 2266 kilo newton. so 2266 kilo newton is the upward force and the downward force is only 1658 kilo newton therefore in the when the tank is empty when there is water table then the tank will get easily lifted because the upward force is more upward force is 2266 downward force is 1658 therefore the tank will be float will be floating will be floating when the tank is empty therefore this is much less than the floating force hence provide therefore what is the alternative alternative is uh, provide projections all around the slab projection extend the base slab extend the base slab all around so that the soil standing on the projection on the projection will give additional downward force additional downward force so that the tank will be safe so what is the projection that is to be given right that is the concern now so this is much less than the flotation force hence provide projections of base slab beyond the face of the vertical walls by an amount equal to x meters x meters all round so that the weight of soil column supported by the projection the soil standing on the projections will provide additional downward force now we are in short of downward force so the soil standing on the outside projection will uh, give additional downward force so that uh, we can just uh, go for a safer design so it is assumed that if the tank is floated the earth would rupture on the vertical plane shown in the figure. Suppose this is the projection, projection. So these are this is the dotted line, this is the dotted line. So within these dotted lines, so whatever is the earth here that will give additional downward force. And sometimes in some soil it will be at an angle. It will be an angle. Uh, of course, that need not be considered. Most soils would tend to rupture on an inclined plane. Thus tending to increase the effective downward so we will forget about it we will forget about the additional force we just consider the tank only uh, at the around the uh, projection around the projection only right. now weight of soil supported by projection weight of soil supported by the projection is equal to the circumference is uh, 12 meters 5 meters 12 meter 5 meters so total length that is 12 plus 12 plus 5 plus 5 is the total length in the width x is the projection so that length in the width is the area area x is the projection right into h 3.5 meters 3.5 meters is the depth of the soil into 17,000 is the unit weight of soil so 202300 into x newtons right now we have to find out what is the projection that is needed now weight of roof slab already we have calculated weight of walls already we have calculated weight of base slab including the projection that is 5 plus 2 into 0.28 2, 2 times the thickness plus 2 times the projection 2 into x that is on one side if this is one dimension 5 plus 2 times wall thickness plus 2 times projection on the other side 12 meters into 2 into wall thickness plus 2 into the projection 
so the total width total length of the base including the wall thickness and the projection into 0 0.35 0 0.35 is the thickness of the base line into 25000 25000 so this gives the total weight total weight of concrete total weight of concrete now we have to equate this is the total uplift force total downward force we know that is when you add the slab plus wall plus base slab that will give the total weight no water empty tank is empty this is the total uplift force so equating the total upward force and the total downward force so numerical calculations we can go through so equating and uh, doing some uh, simplifications we, we find x equal to 1.05 meter the projection equating the total downward force and the total upward force we that we find that we need a projection of 1.05 meter now check check is uh, width is uh, 5 meters plus 2 into 0.28 plus 2 into 1.05 2 into 1.05 this uh, 2 again is missing in the source therefore actually we have to add the projection 2 into 1.05 similarly here also 12 plus 2 times the wall thickness plus 2 times the projection x is 1.05 is only on one side um, therefore uh, 2 into 1.05 so these values will be little more we have to add them and uh, find out the total downward load weight of soil supported weight of walls weight of roof slab like this we have to equate the total upward force total downward force and to find out the factor of safety factor of safety uh, here after calculating the total downward force and the total uplift force we find uh, yes this is the diagram we have to just uh, consider the total width the total width is uh, x projection on this side, x projection on this side. So there they are not used the two, therefore that two has to be added, two has to be included. So, so this is about the total base width. Total base width is 5 meters plus 0.28 into 2 plus x into 2, that will be the total width into similarly in the length also. So, Therefore, considering the values, the total, the factor of safety against flotation is equal to uh, this by this. So, these values uh, are already available. So, this is the upward force, this is the downward force, upward force. So, the value is 1.09 because the uh, downward force will have to be more, just listen here, uh, the total downward, downward force is 464, yes. That has to be more. The downward force will have to be more. This is the upward force. So therefore, 464 is the downward force. Downward force. So total downward force by total upward force. So the downward force will have to be more to prevent uplift. So equal to 1.09. But we have to provide a minimum factor of safety of 1.1. 1.1 because uh, depending upon the compaction. This is what the author says, the compaction, if it is not proper, the concrete will not possess a density of 25,000 Newton per meter cube. Nowadays we know how we compact, uh, therefore, uh, maybe less than 25,000. In which case, all weights will become less, your downward weight, downward load will become less. The earth may weigh less than 17,000 Newton per meter cube, unless it is properly compacted. The after construction of the tank, backfilling is to be properly done, it has to be compacted well. If it is not compacted well, then that may not have a unit weight of 17,000 Newton per meter. That depends upon the workmanship quality. Therefore, therefore, and similarly, the groundwater may turn saline. Saline. And when it when it is saline, the unit weight of water will be little more, more than 9810. Therefore, considering these factors, it is better to provide a minimum factor of safety of 
one against flotation. Again, flotation. Therefore, if you slightly increase the width, you make the width as 1.05 to 1.1 meter. 1.1 meter. Now, even this 1.1 meter, if uh, these calculations are set right, uh, there may be some change. Anyway, that will not concentrate now. Uh, therefore, uh, 1.1 meter. Therefore, that will take care of the factor of six. When you provide a projection of 1.1 meter, because the difference is very small, 1.09. You want to move from 1.09 to 1.1. Already we have provided a projection of 1.05. Yes, we have provided a a projection of 1.05 meter. Therefore, 1.1 will do. 1.1 will do. So, only to adjust 0.01, 1.1 meter will do. Therefore, that will decide the size of the or the projection. Size of the projection is 1.1 meter. Instead of 1.05, we have provided 1.1 meter. And uh, these calculations are very important. First of all, we have to thoroughly check when the tank is empty and there is fully saturated soil outside whether the tank will be safe from flotation or not. This is the most important check that has to be done in the case of underground water tanks. And other designs are usual design only. Anyway, other design also we will have to complete. So, this is the most important check. Right. Now, base slab will be designed as a one-way slab because the size of the slab is inner, inner dimension is 5 meters by 12 meters. So it is more than 2. Therefore the slab will behave as a one-way slab. And the outside you got projection 1.1, 1.2 that will be designed as a cantilever. Design. But here also how to calculate the bending moment, how to calculate the different forces that is, that is very important. Therefore, it, it is to be discussed. The upward pressure is 37768.5. We have calculated the beginning, that is uh, uh, gamma into the H. That is, initially we have calculated uh, H equal to 3.5 plus 0.35, 3.85 meters. So that is the pressure already at the beginning of the problem, that is uh, design of the base slab. So this is given. Self weight of slab is uh, 1 into 1. We are calculating these values per square meter into 0.35 into this thing. So, this is upward pressure, this is the downward pressure. Upward pressure and uh, upward pressure, anyway, for your verification, I just, uh, we'll just go back. Yes. Ah, this is the pressure. This is the pressure. The pressure is 9810 into 3.15. This is the upward pressure. Upward pressure. Available at the bottom of the tank when the water level rises up to the ground level. Water level. Because say the, the sorry. The water at the bottom of the base slab will also try to reach the ground level. That will cause upward pressure. That value equal to uh, 9810 into 3.85. 3.15. So, this is the upward pressure. The other one is that of the self weight of the slab. Self weight of the slab is uh, 3. Self weight of the slab. We have stopped here. Uh, upward pressure. This is self-weight of the slab. 
So this minus this will give, so 37, 768 minus will give you the net upward pressure. This is upward, this is self weight. So net upward pressure is equal to 29, not 28.5. This also will require sketches. So please carefully listen this diagram. So this is the upward pressure minus self weight of the slab. That is equal to 29, not 28.5 Newton per m of square. Because once if we understood these forces, the calculation bending moment will be easier. If you simply see the numbers, you will not understand. So this is 29 not 18.5 right so this is the soil pressure the downward pressure that is the soil resting on the projection so vertical pressure is equal to gamma into h 17000 3.5 only lateral pressure is ka into gamma h so vertical pressure is equal to 17000 3.5 is equal to 59500 newton per square meter downward pressure on the projections on the projection so this is one pressure then this one this one is a lateral pressure lateral pressure lateral pressure on the side wall of the tank on the side wall of the tank uh, intensity is ka in gamma into h at the bottom total pressure is equal to half into ka in the gamma into h square that so we will be calculating all those values so we have to understand what is the meaning of uh, the different forces so the downward force upward force minus downward force here lateral force acting on the side wall this is the vertical pressure on the projection based on the height of earth 17,003.5 plus plus weight of wall plus roof load plus reaction on each wall so how we are going to calculate this we are going to discuss if this is clear if the calculation of this force uh, is understood and uh, if you are able to sketch the forces properly calculation is lengthy so we will be showing number of, number of lengthy calculations so but you are so 29 not one is now clear weight of wall per meter run wall thickness is 0.28 height is 3.5 considering 1 meter length into 25,000 so this is the weight of wall 24500 then weight of roof slab transfer to each wall a roof slab uh, thickness is 0.155 but we have used the same um, as available on the source therefore uh, therefore in the place of 0.2 you can take it as 0 0.155 0 0.155 into 2.5 uh, plus 0 0.28 0 0.28 is the thickness of the wall so into one that is in the breadth direction five meters is the width of the slab so half the roof slab you are considering one side half the roof slab is five by two two point five plus wall thickness into thickness of the wall thickness of the roof slab roof slab into one meter length into twenty five thousand so this is the weight of the roof slab transferred on each wall in 5 meters 2.5 meter to the left side wall 2.5 meter to the right side wall that is the concept that is involved here so 13,800 now you know the meaning of 24,500 13,800 29,018 what is available in the figure 24,500 13,800 because here only doubts you will have doubts if these calculations are understood design is not there so this is uh, 17,000, 29,000, not one. So other calculations follow. Right. Uh, now before uh, proceeding further, we'll just show the behavior of the wall. It is subjected to here at the center. It is subjected to net upward pressure. So due to the net upward pressure, you will have hugging moment like this. Tank is empty, hugging moment like this. That will cause tension at the top. So tension at the top means we will provide steel on the top in the horizontal direction, mean reinforcement, reinforcement. So this is the width direction, 5 meters, 5 meters. And here at the ends, it will act as a cantilever, subjected to again net upward pressure, net upward pressure. So for that, the tensile cracks will be at the bottom, for which we will be providing steel at the bottom, steel at the bottom. Just 
we have marked only the location of main reinforcement, direction and location of the main reinforcement. So this figure shows the different forces, this figure shows the behavior, tension and the direction and the location of the main reinforcement. Right. Now weight of earth on the projection is equal to uh, 17,000 3.5. 17,000 into 3.5 into 1 into 1.1 that is the total pressure but uh, per square meter it is only 17,000 into 3.5 because this value will be available in the uh, calculation this value will also be available in the calculation you need not confuse get confused this is per square meter this is considering the width of the wall also width of the projection also it is 1 point so on seeing this value one need not get confused so net unbalanced force equal to, so this is uh, 37768.5 into 7.76 into 1. Uh, so these calculations, uh, yes, the total net up unbalanced force, net unbalanced force equal to the total upward force minus total downward force. So that is the net unbalanced upward force. So due to which the reaction equal to this by 2, each volatility of the load. That is 42, 792. So this 42, 792 is this value. 42, 792, 792, this value. Right. Adding all these values. Now, it's only a question of finding out the bending moment at this corner back the wall and the projection meets. So here it will be subjected to a bending moment which will cause tension at the bottom. Then bending moment at the center. The center the value will be uh, that will cause a tension at the top. Tension at the top. So if the value of bending moment here is calculated this will be designed as a cantilever. If the bending moment here is calculated this will be designed for the hogging moment for which will provide seal on the top. So for this also, we have shown simplified calculations in the next page. So uh, these calculations uh, can understand. For, uh, I'll, I'll show the uh, the bending moment for the cantilevering portion. For the cantilevering portion, uh, one is uh, namely the downward force, upward force. Everything is there. Uh, as far as the bending moment, the cantilever portion is concerned here, or the portion is concerned. So this will not cause any bending moment. This vertical force will not cause any bending moment. So this will cause one bending moment. The upward force will cause one bending moment. Upward force will cause that is uh, 29 not 18.5 into 1.1 into 1.1 by 2 and here this will cause a bending moment 59,500 plus this will cause this will be acting at a height of 1.517 so this will also cause a bending moment so considering all these forces we have to find out the bending moment here also when you find out the bending moment here at the center at the center uh, the, uh, the calculation available in the book or the written material also will be in one way. But what you have to understand is the total downward force. You add all these forces. Uh, uh, that also I have shown. Add all these forces into 5.28 by 2. This force into 5.28 by 2. So that will be uh, anti-clockwise as far as we are concerned. Anti-clockwise. Then we have this force, 59,500 into 1.1 meter into the distance is 1.1 by 2 so at the center of gravity plus this distance up to the center. So this will cause anti clockwise moment. This will cause anti clockwise moment. Right. Now coming to this UDL, this UDL will cause the opposite moment, namely of 29,518.5 into 7.76 by 2 into 7.76 by 4 of the of the distance 
of the test types. So uh, this calculation uh, shown in a simplified form. Therefore, uh, this calculation, if you read it once or twice, you, the viewers can understand. Uh, concept is important, but for doing problem calculations also important. Yes, this is the one. Uh, the total downward force into 5.28 by 2 minus this is the upward force in the 7 point something by 2, 3.288 into 3.88 by 2. This is the upward UDL over half the width of the slab. Then this is the lateral force acting on the wall into 1.57, 1.517. Then this is the load acting on the projection, 59,500 into 1.1 into 3.88 minus 1. Point, that is 3.88 is half the distance, namely 7.76 by 2. Therefore, the total downward force into 5.28 by 2, 5.28 by 2 is uh, some 2.64, 2.64. Then this is one value. This is another value, 59,500 into 1.1 into that distance is some 3.38 up to the end minus half the distance. That is uh, 3.88 minus 0.55 or so. Then this upward UDL. Then this pressure, lateral pressure, lateral pressure. So if this is understood, uh, one can easily understand. So to simplify only, I have done it. Marking clockwise arrow, anti-clockwise arrow, about the center, about the center, how to take moment. Therefore, on seeing the lengthy uh, calculations from the book or uh, this material, one need not get fear because but this is more important. Only when you are able to properly calculate the bending moment, you can do your proper design. So this, uh, this is the same step in a simplified form. Same step in a simplified form. This is the bending moment, 100, 184. Why I given this is, uh, on seeing this equation, on seeing this equation, one need not get confused. This is also clear uh, that uh, that has been simplified further. That has been simplified further. And you get a moment of 100, 184 at the center. So for which the thickness required is equal to 256. We equating the bending moment to the moment of the system, we get a thickness 256. We provide 320 mm overall depth so that the effective thickness is equal to uh, say 270 mm, effective depth equal to 270 mm with an cover of with an effective cover of 50 mm. And the area of steel equal to bending moment by sigma is the area. So this is usual RC design. It is a one-way slab. Once if you know the bending moment, equating to the moment of resistance, equating the bending moment to the moment of resistance, you can find out the effective depth. Then equating bending moment equal to AST into sigma ST into JD, you can find out the area of steel. So that is your usual RZ design. But what are the different forces? How to calculate the values? How to find out the bending moment? You have to take care of the uplift force. You have to involve the calculation of total upward force, total downward force, finding out the factor of safety. You provide enough projections. Only after deciding all these things, calculation of forces, it will take a lot of time. It will take a lot of time. But you have to understand the source may have some mistake. That is, you have to correct it. The individual will have to understand the concept and it has to be corrected. Whatever may be the right. And the design of this is a one way slab design. One way slab, finding out D, finding out AST, a diameter of bar spacing. Here, nothing to teach. Nothing to teach. Now, what is the steel that is required at the top face. Actually, this is for the cantilever. This is actually for the bending mode at the center. Bending mode at the center. And uh, you can just uh, steel design, one can easily, the, once you find out the bending moment for the cantilevering portion, bending moment for the mid span, then usual RC design only. And uh, as minimum steel, I mean distribution steel. You provided 0.24% as given in IS 3370. Uh, therefore, adopt the 
percentage and provide the steam and uh, these calculations these uh, diagrams will help you in doing the calculations so for this you have drawn line sketches i given i marked all the forces so here they are given the part and uh, if you understand the individual drawings if you understand the individual drawings that we have discussed earlier uh, these things it's only a combination of them. directly if you see this diagram you will be confused therefore if we have given lot of break up sketches if you just recall all those things this diagram will not be difficult otherwise uh, this will be and uh, normally students will just uh, draw lot, lot of dots and lot of lines uh, changing the location etc so that will be there but uh, still you have to understand from the beginning step by step so uh, only that will give you a clear idea about the design i think i think that, that's the end and so you can understand and uh, one more sketch is missing one more diagram is missing anyway i think i have not done much because it involves the design of so many things so probably if you listen to the lecture once or twice it will become thorough but design of an underground water tank is very very important in a civil engineer's life somewhere it will be useful now maybe for an examination point of view later this will be very useful depending upon what job you are going to take up since i since my discussion was very elaborate uh, i think every point you might not have got it so that requires uh, going through the lecture once or twice more so with this i want to complete the design of the discussion on the design of underground water tanks so viewers can just uh, uh, go through that if there is any uh, deficiency kindly manage and uh, i believe that i have done something on the design of underground water tanks so try to make use of 158 159 and this is 160 to have a comprehensive idea about uh, this is because i have not concentrated much on the numbers uh, that uh, may not uh, people may not like if i simply read the numbers i have concentrated more on the design more on the design concept behavior how to find out the bending moment calculations and all these things right so i hope it will be useful to the viewers right so thank you thank you for the patience